Imagine we have a three-way classification task. We want to train a machine learning model that can distinguish between images of oranges, beaches and apricots. With the current state of deep learning, it is quite easy to train a model to perform fairly well on this task. Let's consider a model that has been trained on thousands of images of oranges, peaches and apricots. When given a new image, the model will output a three-dimensional vector, where the elements indicate the probabilities of either being an orange, peach or apricot. Typically, the largest element is then used to determine the class. It is peach in this case. However, the models are rarely perfect, so they can sometimes make mistakes. For example, the image of this orange has been mistakenly categorized as an apricot. We can report the overall performance of the model using accuracy, i.e. the fraction of images correctly classified by the model. Let's say, in this case, the model performs at 91% accuracy. However, when training the model, we could have trained it in a slightly different manner. For example, initialize the model parameters using a different random seed. This would give us a similar performing model, but with different parameters. We can re keep repeating this so that we have an entire ensemble of models. It has been shown in literature that if we average the outputs of each of these models, the overall average ensemble model we have will outperform all of the individual seed models. One intuition for this is that each seed of the model is learning different aspects of the input data, which helps in overall accuracy of the ensemble model. So all seems great so far. Using an ensemble of models, we can achieve better accuracy. However, there is a problem. Before we had the ensemble of models, for any new image, we would have had to evaluate using only one model. But now, with n models in our ensemble, we have to evaluate that image n times, meaning the whole process to classify any new image now takes n times longer. In many time-critical applications of machine learning models, this is very undesirable. Hence, it is exactly this problem that knowledge distillation seeks to solve. How can we achieve the same level of accuracy as an ensemble of models without having the cost of a longer evaluation time? To better understand the question, mathematically, let us say each seed has k parameters. This means the entire ensemble of n models has nk parameters. The goal of knowledge distillation is to train a new model with only k parameters to match the performance accuracy of the ensemble of models that has nk parameters. The question is, how do we achieve this? The simplest solution is to use teacher forcing. We are going to train a new model with k parameters, which we'll call the student. We will call the ensemble model the teacher. Let us understand what this means mathematically. Let us use x to represent an input image, and the output of the model would be the three-dimensional probability distribution p of x. If we didn't have teacher forcing, we would train the student model using the true labels y is equal to 100 for orange, 010 for peach, and 001 for apricot. We would then train using the cross entropy loss function, as shown. If you're not sure why we use a cross entropy loss function for classification, do ask in the comments. However, when we perform teacher forcing, we replace the hard true labels with the teacher's prediction probabilities. For example, the teacher's label for a particular orange data point is likely to be something like 0 0.9, 0 0.02, 0 0.08, which is not as harsh as the true labels, 
but is intended to make it easier for the student to mimic the teacher's understanding of the data, and thus perform as well as the teacher, without needing as many parameters as the teacher. And that is all there is to the essence of knowledge distillation.